All right, looks like we are live. Welcome to Standing for Truth. My name is Donnie B, and I am your host and moderator for tonight's round two debate between Dr. Ken Hoven and Daria Bloodworth. This is a continuation of our 2022 Evolution Debate Challenge series. Daria and Kent, for round one, they debated how are whales and pine trees related? And round two, we are debating the question, how are humans and chimpanzees related? So I'm looking forward to this one, and I know the, uh, the audience is as well. So why don't we do a, a brief introduction? Daria, been a little bit since you've been here, uh, since round one, that is. So um, a little bit about yourself, a, a brief introduction, who you are, a little bit about your channel, if you have one, website, so on and so forth. Go ahead. Sure. Um, my name is Daria Bloodworth. I work for the Yukon government. And no, I'm not saying what department or what the capacity or whatever. Um, but ba because my views are my own and they're not my employers. But anyway, um, basically, I'm currently coming to you from Edmonton, Alberta, because I'm on holiday. And I guess that's what um, people who live in the Yukon do. They go down south for the holidays instead of going up to the Yukon to see the lights. Um, as for, don't you just hate it when you have a train of thought and then it derails? <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> Remind me of the question. Oh, introduction, right? Just a little about yourself. Um, basically other than, um, I've always been a scientifically minded individual and I believe that you can't, you can't honestly be a theist without, um, accepting facts. And you can't be a theist without, I mean, we do a disservice to God if we don't engage with reality. So that is why I cannot be a creationist. And that's my position on it. Okay, Daria, thank you so much for uh, that introduction. We'll hand it over to uh, Kent. Kent, how, how have you been, uh, I guess, since yesterday, since we just had you here yesterday for a, a two-on-one debate? Uh, Kent, a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. My name is Ken Hoven. I was raised in East Peoria, Illinois, been in Pensacola, Florida for 30 years, and now in Lenox, Alabama, straight north of there, 70 miles for about almost seven years. I'm a Baptist preacher. I've been for 48 years. I taught science and math 15 years. I believe the Bible is absolutely true. God made everything in six days. There are too many billion symbiotic relationships to it cannot be explained by evolution. And I think evolution is the dumbest, absolute dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history of the world. There's never been a dumber idea than to teach the kids they're related to a mosquito and they came from a rock, which came from nothing. The whole idea is real dumb. But if you want to believe that, that's fine. But don't teach it to anybody else at taxpayer expense. Go teach it in a private school. Evolution has, should never be involved in a public school system at all. So that's my position. I think the Bible's right. God made everything in six days, including dinosaurs. They lived with Adam and Eve. Get my video series, 50, 18 hours, 50 bucks. You can get your 50 bucks back when you send it back. Can't beat a deal like that. And I teach a lot on what the Bible says about the end times, what's going to happen, called What on Earth is About to Happen, where it's coming like a freight train. Get my video series. Go to drdino.com, D-R-D-I-N-O. You can subscribe to our channel, Kent Hovind Official, at gmail.com. We think God ought to get the glory for his creation. We're straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles in the itty-bitty town of Lenox, right there. 140 acre, amazing place around here. Big tours all the time, hundreds of science lessons and fishing and boating and swimming and it's amazing here. Just come down. Matt, you've been here what? Long time. A year. A year. Yeah. Today, one year. Anniversary for me, too. Okay. Uh, that's it. Go ahead. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kent, for that introduction. Thanks to the both of you. I do have your relevant links in the description box. I've also got a guest mod here uh, for tonight to help me uh, gather questions and organize things for uh, the audience Q&A. So I've got Sam from Redefine Living. Sam, uh, brother, good to have you. Any hey, words you. from introduction from yourself? Thanks for being here. Yeah, no, hey, my name's Sam. My YouTube channel is Redefine Living. Don't really do much on it, but I'm happy to be here tonight. And so, yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good to have you. So for the audience sake, we're going to be having a more, uh, you know, free flowing debate as we have been doing. We'll have uh, opening statements. We'll allow uh, Daria to take, let's say, up to 10 or 12 minutes just to kind of lay out the uh, the arguments for tonight. Then we'll have Ken have equal time. And then we're just going to get into a back and forth discussion. 
Sam and I will moderate as needed. We'll discuss one topic, one point at a time. And then, of course, we're going to get you guys in the audience involved. We're going to have an audience uh, question and answer period. So either tag myself or uh, Sam, who will be in the chat as Redefine Living. We'll save those questions. We'll have some fun. So with that out of the way, Daria, we're going to hand it over to you. And whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. If you need to sh uh, screen share anything like that, just let me know and I can get that up on screen as well. So whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. All right. Just, hold on. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, you're coming in good. All right, great. I, I think I accidentally hit my uh, the mute button on Firefox, so I just want to be sure I got, got that fixed. You're good. You're good to go. All right. Let me see what I can do. Let's see if we can make the screen share happen this time. <laughs> if you need a walkthrough, it's just right at the bottom next to, oh, there you go. You've mastered it already. So we've got your screen up. Let's just see if your uh, PowerPoints work though. I think that was the issue we had before. I think they sh oh, that would be the wrong application. So give me there we go. Hit play. Yes. Yeah, you're good. Alrighty. So my presentation is titled How Chimpanzees and Humans Are Related. Or you can also call it Things Ken Hovind Should Know If He Had Real Doctorates. And the question is, was how are humans and chimpanzees related? And there are a bunch of different things that humans and chimpanzees have in common, such as we're both apes. We both have opposable thumbs. We're both mammals. The usage of tools, social, we're both social species. There's promiscuity in both species. The usage of facial expressions and sounds to communicate. The ability to remember symbols, culture, cooperation, and language, such as the teaching of, um, such as experiments that, uh, had to get my, um, tripped over my words a little bit there. Um, the ability, uh, the experiments that we did teaching um, chimpanzee sign language. And we share 97% of DNA between humans and apes. And basically, Kent Shore, you know this because of his previous debates with people like T-Jump and Aaron Ra. So my conclusion is that chimps and chimpanzees and humans have a lot in common. We both have, um, we both have a lot of traits. We both have um, DNA in common. And in the similar is the similarities between us, between chimpanzees and humans that help us to understand ourselves and our place in the world better. So that would conclude my presentation. And, I, and I'm not one to waste a lot of time, so I think I will turn it over to Kent. Okay, thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's have uh, Kent take as much, um, let, let's say up to 10 minutes. And then we're just going to kind of jump right into it and, and discuss each topic at a time, making sure that, that we're keeping this uh, debate clean, civil, and and respectful. So here we go. Uh, Kent, we'll hand it over to you whenever you're ready. Brother, you've got 10 minutes. Hmm. Things Kent Hovind should know if he had a real doctorate. Wow. How about ways Daria should speak and behave if she was a real woman? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. What about cavemen? We've been taught that uh, we're related to apes and chimpanzees. You can believe that if you want. Maybe we just saw evidence of that in a minute ago. So the Bible clearly teaches clearly that God made everything, everything in six days. And there was a big flood 4,400 years ago. And then God, uh, God uh, set my timer. I'm oh, sorry. One. I meant to have it there. Okay. I don't want to monopolize the time. Okay. Uh, and then there's the Judgment Day coming. There was a big flood that destroyed the world. That's what formed the fossils. That's what formed all the canyons, or nearly all of them. And all the layers, all the layers are the same age. They all formed in one year. Can't say the top layer is younger. There's no such thing as a geologic column. That's dumb, okay? All the layers form quickly. I'm going to cover all that on my video series. Okay. The Bible, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Hmm. And the scoffers, it says, are willingly ignorant of God's creation and the flood and the coming judgment of God. So if you want to pay to teach innocent children there was no creator and that man came from a rock, which is what evolution says, one of the key evidences they use is the silly idea of cavemen. This idea that we're related to a chimpanzee and there were people that lived in caves that were half human, half chimpanzee. God said he'll make man in his own image. So is this grandpa? The textbooks teach this, that this is part of evolution, that man 
an ape slowly, slowly evolved into, well, look, look at this. Here's the evidence. It worked. Wow. So according to their dumb religion, nothing exploded or rapidly expanded faster than the speed of light and slowly evolved into everything, all the planets, all the stars, and finally life got started. Nothing. It slowly cooled down to a rock, made planet Earth, then a primate came out of that somehow, and then man came along. So you got nothing, Earth formed, and here we are, primates formed 0 0.01 billion years ago, I see. And there's humans, and we learned how to write 0 0.00001 billion years ago. So just recently learned to write. Okay, Bible says, since by man came death, by man came the resurrection of the life. Man, the resurrection of the dead. Man brought death into the world. The Bible's clear on the topic, and I think the evidence is overwhelming, but the textbooks show an amoeba, or, or a bacteria, or a single-celled creature of some kind, slowly evolving through the fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal, and finally human stage. This is absolute propaganda. This is not science at all. This is a religion they believe in. The secret of how life on Earth began. Today, life has conquered every square inch of the Earth. But when the planet formed, it was a dead rock. How did life get started? See, I keep telling them, you guys believe you came from a rock, and they get mad at me. But that is what they believe. Matt, you did a program today on that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. It's on our channel, Kent Hovind Official. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. It was one of the shorts posted today. You do believe you came from a rock. But you guys have all these humans and apes and chimpanzees and baboons and orangutans all on a family tree, like you're related to them. Okay. I think this is absolute sheer stupidity. Lucy is the one that is the most famous one that they talk about, having a common ancestor with man. Here's our skull display at Dinosaur Adventureland. Come see our museum where you learn some real science. We got replicas of most of the skulls. So is this grandpa? Well, the Bible says they profess themselves to be wise and they became fools, okay? And you're a fool if you believe you came from a rock, a fool, okay? The fool said in his heart, there's no God. You're a fool if you don't believe in God. I second that emotion, okay? Bible says fools despise wisdom and instruction. They don't want to learn anything other. They're comfortable with their theory because it gives them freedom from God's rules. They can act like a man or a woman if they feel like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in scorning and then fools hate knowledge. They hate knowledge. A proverb says, he says, you said it not all my counsel. You wouldn't listen. Not means zero. You wouldn't listen to my counsel. Okay. He said, I will mock when your fear cometh. There's going to come a time when you're Scared stiff of what's happening to you. I don't want that. I'm trying to win you over, okay? Bible says they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They hated knowledge. They didn't choose the fear of the Lord. They despised all my reproof. They wouldn't listen. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So here's the bologna, bologna they teach. We started off like a chimpanzee and slowly evolved to modern humans, Okay. Bible says the scoffers in the last days would walk after their own lust and would be willingly ignorant of, of the creation, how the heavens were of old, ignorant of the flood and ignorant of the coming judgment of God. Creation, flood, coming judgment. God made everything, and God said he made it all in six days. I will cover that some other time. I want to get more time. Okay, let's see. I want to get to the so-called cavemen. All right here. What about the cavemen? We did that. Uh, one moment. Oh, I'll tell you what. In my last two minutes, I want to show a video somebody sent me about Lucy. I thought, this is classic. Did I get it over there? It's on the wrong screen. Help me, Matt. Talk to me. Okay. Uh, why isn't it? Yeah, it's right here. I got it. Hit play. Okay, drag it over to the beginning. Right, okay. That's the end of it. All right. There's no uh, audio here, so they can still hear me, right? Uh, human, human pelvic anatomy, female hips are wider than male. Uh, so uh, the, they reconstructed the ilium, uh, the hip bone there. Uh, chimpanzee pelvic bones are very different, very different. They are both designed by the same designer. They both have a sacrum. They both have ways for the nerve to get in and out they both, uh, of the, through the bone. They both have a leg socket for the hip bone, to, uh, thigh bone to go into. I agree. The similarities between humans and apes and chimpanzees are because they have the same designer. Not at all because they got a common ancestor. No, we're no relation to the chimps other than the same God designed us all. There's Lucy's so-called uh, sacrum uh, be between the hip bones. Let's see. Uh, um, there appears to be a portion missing from either side, making the sacrum bottom angled, leaving the last set of formina open. Okay. So there's the chimpanzee sacrum. 
uh, what it looks like uh, compared to a human, it's very, very different. They have 10. Uh, Lucy, the so-called bones of Lucy had eight, okay? It's got, it's contrary to some claims, humans and chimps, well, this is all the skull bones they actually found. They put together real artist construction of a Lucy. Skull fragments were adhered to a chimpanzee skull to make them fit. Chimpanzees are like three feet tall. We're not related to chimpanzees. 47 remains of Lucy until they found out somebody had actually slipped in a vertebrae up at the top belonging to a baboon. Whoa, so had somebody lied or cheated? No, oh, they would never do that. Missing link skeleton baboon vertebrae discovered among world famous bones. I see. So part of Lucy is fake, okay? Uh, due to the discovery of baboon vertebrae previously supported 47 remains of a single individual has become 46, okay? Meaning there's now less evidence for Lucy than there was in 2015. Baboon remains slipped in there somehow. See, these guys, and you probably also, uh, Daria, are desperate. You want to be an animal. I know that because that way there's no, re there's no rules. There are no thou shalt nots. That's the real reason. Shouldn't it be a fact it took 30 years to identify a baboon uh, remain in the most famous skeleton? Ah. Men died believing this conglomeration was a single individual before a monkey remain was identified in it. It doesn't seem like careful analysis of the supposed homo uh, human ancestors is being done. It took too that long to identify a monkey remain. Maybe those involved don't want to know. I agree. The guy that sent me this video today, I said, this is classic. It's two and a half minutes. I'm going to play it. See films. Uh, see science films lab. So there you go. Two minutes. Uh, I believe strongly. Let's see. Right here. Slide number 1055. 1055. If you watch my video series, I cover all this in great detail. They drew a bunch of lines on paper claiming that humans have a common ancestor with sponges and monkeys and everything else. This is nothing but propaganda. This is not science. They say, he's the daddy of us all, an African skull. You don't know he's the daddy of anybody. When you find a skull or a bone of anything, a fossil of any kind, you don't know it had any children. He's the mother of all mammals, right? If you find a fossil in the dirt, you know it died. That's it. You can't prove it had any kids, and you sure can't prove it had any kids that lived, and you can't prove it had kids that were lived and reproduced, and you can't prove it had kids that were different than themselves. Why do evolutionists claim bones in the dirt can do something no living animal can do? No animal today is producing anything other than its kind. One minute left. Every farmer in history will tell you cows produce cows. That's it. There are no, none, zip, zero, nada, oh, het, nine, none, hapa, exceptions. A bunch of different languages, okay. Depends what you mean by cavemen. There are people today that live in caves. There was the world's most wanted caveman for a while. They, found, they finally found him and sent him wherever he's going to go. But there's people today live in caves. So that's not evidence of anything. National pornographic, someone's trying to make a monkey out of you. Yeah, they sure are. They sure are. I think they succeeded. Daria, go ahead and show us how, they, how it worked. Go ahead. All right, Kent, thank you for your 10 minutes. That concludes the uh, 10 minute, up to 10 minute opening statements. Uh, Sam, I saw you on mute. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, as much as we love a good dumpster fire sometimes, now that the shots have been fired and the score is 1-1, let's keep it on the debate. Thanks, okay. Guys. Hey, I, if you want to play rough, I know how to play rough. Okay, I'd rather have a nice, cool discussion. <laughs> Believe Fair me. enough. I can handle it any way you want to bring it. Go ahead. I know karate, judo, taekwondo, and seven more Japanese words. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Okay, guys, keeping it fun already. So uh, here we go. We got one jab in each, and now we're getting into uh, in, into the discussion. So uh, lots of topics on the table um, from Daria, from your PowerPoints, and of course from Kent's. So what we'll do is, uh, since Kent just ended with his opening, Daria, we will let you pick the first topic, ask the first question, however you want to uh, proceed. And, and wherever you want to take this discussion. So whenever you're ready, you're good to go and you're unmuted as well. So floor is yours. <laughs> well, I think I'd like to bring the debate back to the original topic, how chimpanzees and humans are related. Since regardless of all the things about my gender and all the Bible quotes and whatnot, let's get back to the main topic of this debate, how humans and champion, chimpanzees are related. And 
I noticed that nowhere in Kent's um, speech did he um, oppose the fact that we're both apes. Nowhere did he um, oppose the fact that we have opposable thumbs. Nowhere did he oppose the fact that we're all we're both mammals. The usage of tools, social species, none of it. So nowhere in Kent's ten minutes did he even attempt to to challenge anything that I said. He just went on and on and on. And Kent, um, it might be a wise idea in the future to create a PowerPoint based on the topic that you're actually debating instead of using like a ginormous PowerPoint that has um, that has a bunch of irrelevant nonsense that really doesn't apply to anything. I mean, does it really apply as to what my intentions are if the facts support what I say? Does it really... Um, does it really matter um, what is said in Proverbs if we have hard scientific evidence? Okay, go ahead, Kent, if you want to respond to that. We'll give you the floor. Well, uh, could you flash your slide back up there of the things you said or evidence that were related where you talk about the opposable thumb? And I'll talk about each one. Put your slide. I didn't know what your slide was going to say. How am I supposed to prepare a slide for your slide when I've never seen your slide? Put your slide up. I'll take on, take on each topic. Yes, we have opposable thumbs. You can reach your uh, fingers and uh, with your thumbs. Some animals can't do that. And that proves a common relation. Same guy designed them. His name is God. Okay. Uh, all the so-called missing links that they've used to prove we come from chimpanzees have been disproven. Piltdown man, the uh, Nebraska man, they've all been hoaxes or frauds. So there is no historical evidence. There's no scientific evidence. Neanderthal man. Hey, well, let me get to the opposable thumbs. Nothing. Let's talk about the feet. Uh, let's see. All right here. Can I address that? Is that you're going to put your slide up? Daria. Yeah, Daria, if, if you wanted to put your slide up. Put um, your slide help. up. Okay. Sure, but can I just um, go back to what he was talking about, the Piltdown Man and Neanderthal? Sure, go ahead. First of all, Neanderthal um, and Piltdown Man are two separate species, and Piltdown Man I'll address later, but the fact of the matter is, we weren't talking about Neanderthals. We were talking about humans and chimpanzees. Can we please stay on topic? And the second okay. thing, Piltdown Man, that was obviously a hoax. And you know who discovered that hoax? Scientists. Scientists who accept the fact of evolution. So yes, Piltdown Man was a hoax. And it was discovered to be a hoax. But it wasn't creationists that discovered it. It was evolutionists. Ev people who accept the fact that evolution by natural selection happened. So you can try to make this all a claim that, oh, the evolutionists are trying to deceive people. But in reality, it was evolutionists who found that Piltdown Man was incorrect. So with that out of the way, I'll pull up my slide again. Well, I guess I assumed that since you were the topic of the debate was, are chimpanzees and humans related? You would say, we have anecdotal evidence or we have fossil evidence that we're related. Obviously, humans and chimps are different right now. So th there, there has to be some way that they connected back. To Do you believe, in, are there, is there any fossil evidence to indicate that uh, our ancestor is common to both humans and ape? Would you agree there are differences between humans and chimpanzees? Are there any differences? Yes, of course there are differences. OK, so well, that's why we're different species. You gave what you thought were some of the similarities. Uh, tree, tree climbing monkeys have an angled femur. Lucy's femur was, uh, you don't want to talk about that, about Lucy, but I want to get to the, about the foot. You didn't talk, you talk about how the thumb is opposable. Well, tell me how the feet came, okay? When they found the footprints, they added a toe separation in there. There's a human foot on the left and a chimpanzee foot, on, or orangutan foot on the right. They have a grasping toe. Can you hang from a tree branch from your toe on one side, a little big toe and a little other toes on the other side? The bones are very different in the feet. You said there's an opposable thumb. We both have two eyes. So do fish. What does that prove? That proves a common designer. Where's your slide? Put your slide up. I'll take on each one. I oh, couldn't prepare for your slide. I took a picture of it. I can do it that way. I'll go for next debate if you'd like. But put your slide up. I'll take on each one unless you don't want an answer. Oh, hold on. I thought I was sharing my screen. My bad. Give me one moment. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought I already had it up. There we go. Sorry about that. 
you start off by stating we're both apes. Well, you're not talking about me. Maybe you and the apes, but not me. You can make that statement if you want, but that's not science. Kent, are you saying you're not human? I am a human. I'm not an ape. You, I don't know, but the apes and humans, you can say we're both apes. That doesn't make it true. I could say we're both monkeys. We're both uh, bananas. Oh, we can both fly. I can make all kinds of statements. It doesn't make it true. You just made a statement. We're both apes. I don't believe it for a second. Okay. Secondly, opposable thumbs. That doesn't prove relationship. Trucks and cars have round tires. That proves they evolved from a skateboard. This is the logic you have. I don't know how you don't get it. We're mammals. That's true. So are cats and dogs. Are you a cat? Are you a dog? They're mammals. Come on now. Okay. Use of tools. Come on. The chimpanzee use of tools is near nothing. Okay. They'll get a stick to dig a bug out of a tree to eat it. Do you think that's anything similar to building a space shuttle? Is that anything similar to building a, a race car? There is no similarity between the chimpanzee use of tools and humans creation of tools. Does the chimpanzee make the tool, fashion it, form it, forge it, dig the iron out of the ground, melt it into steel, smelt it into steel, and then make a, a, a tool out of it? There's no similarity. Well, how do you do that? We're a social species. We get along with each other sometimes. Okay. So a lot of uh, fish are social species. They run around in schools. You should see our dumb ducks come around. They hang out together. Okay. That doesn't prove they're related. So what? They're a social species. Promiscuity, as in they have sex with other creatures that aren't their mate. So a lot of people do that. Some have people with some have sex with people that aren't their sex, that are their sex. I mean, okay. Uh, promiscuity. Usage of facial expression and sounds to communicate. So you think the woo, 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 is is talking like Shakespeare and Romeo to Romeo to Juliet, Juliet? Come on now. Ability to remember symbols. The chimpanzee ability to memorize is because you're going to feed them if they, if they get the right answer. You pick the right one, we feed you a banana or something. That's why. Culture. You think chimpanzee or culture is anything similar to human culture? Come on now. Cooperation. Watch the chimpanzees fight over when there's not enough food. Watch them fight, okay? Language. Do you think chimpanzee language is anything similar to ours? How many words do they have in their vocabulary besides uh, uh, uh? I, I think you are dreaming. Uh, Daria, you made up a list and you're wishing it was true. It's absolute baloney. That's not science. That's your SpongeBob imagination. Look, we're related to a chimpanzee because he goes ooh, 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 and I can go ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, okay. We raised spider monkeys when I was a kid. Trust me, they're not human. So are we just going to ignore the fact that I brought up the fact that um, we were able to teach chimpanzees um, sign language and they were able to pass it down to their offspring? Or are you just going to ignore that for some reason? Wait, wait one at a time. You said that chimpanzees have compassion on their offspring? No, they taught sign language to their offspring, like ASL, American yeah. Sign Language. Yeah. I, I sign slow. I, I slow. I, yeah. So, so therefore, we're related because you can teach them some signs so you can feed them a banana? Well, first of all, it was addressing your comment that the language of chimpanzees is just ooh, ooh, ooh. And no, it's not that, just that. I mean, we can teach them to communicate ideas in American Sign Language. Okay. The average person in the time of Shakespeare walking down the street had about a 20,000 word vocabulary. Today it's decreased greatly, but how many words have, does the most famous chimpanzee know how to speak or sign? 10 or 20? Give me banana. 300. Okay, 800 compared to 20,000. And therefore you're related? So you, they taught a chimpanzee 800 signs to get a new, new banana every time, and therefore that means you're related. This is your logic. I don't understand where you got this. Who taught you that anyway? Research. Research. Ah, okay. All right, dig a little deeper. Too much Jungle Book. Okay, what other evidence would you like to show? Uh, would you oh, agree? The evidence Daria? that was presented. Would you agree that chimpanzee and human feet are very different? Yes, I would agree with that. I didn't say that that was a way that we were related because that's obviously not a way we're related. Why didn't you give the differences? Do you know any humans that have the same amount of hair percentage of their body covered by hair as chimpanzees do? I think the, the, 
the amount of hair on the body is vastly different. May I please answer your previous question? Okay, go ahead. The reason why I didn't bring up the re, um, the differences between humans and chimpanzees is because the topic of this debate was how are humans and chimpanzees related? The topic wasn't how are humans and tram chimpanzees different? So the topic wasn't how they're similar either. You gave some things that you thought were similarities that doesn't prove a relationship. None of them prove a common relationship. Traits. They're common what? traits that, that both species have. I couldn't understand that. They are common traits that both species have. Common traits, okay. So do a lot of other creatures. I'd mentioned schools, uh, schools of fish. Why didn't you include fish in there? Are you related to a fish? Because again, the debate was about chimpanzees and humans. Okay. So your evidence that humans and chimpanzees are related is because chimpanzees can be taught to speak 800 words, one of them was, it was at least, and humans can speak 20,000, and chimpanzees get a stick to dig a bug out, humans make a space shuttle, so therefore we're related. You really, you really believe that? Well, not your misrepresentations, no. Misrepresentations? It's exactly what they teach. Would you agree the face of the chimpanzee is different proportions, width to height and nose structure and all that, than humans? Is the chimpanzee nose the same as a human nose? Would First you like to know? Lucy is not a chimpanzee. What? Lucy yeah. is not a chimpanzee. We're not talking about Lucy. Okay, okay. Would you like the same nose that a chimpanzee has on your face? Hell, I barely like the nose I have on my face currently. Okay, so what did, did you have another slide that I missed with evidences that were related? You're going to put a different one well, up? This one I've already presented. I didn't if I could one. jump in real quick, Daria, would you say that chimpanzees and humans connect to a common ancestor in the, in the distant past? I would say that, yes. However, and so... And I kind of see, and forgive me for interrupting, Donnie, but I think I kind of see where you're going. I think, let me ask the question, just see if I understand this correctly. You're asking that how, if, if they're related to a common ancestor in the past, does that, does that bring, allow for the bringing in of Lucy and of other, um, other ape, other apes um, that are currently extinct into the um, debate we're having right now? Is that what I'm getting? Well, because you're focusing on the similarities. So would you say that those similarities are there because they were inherited from a common ancestor in the past? More or less. Okay. So, you know, I, I do think that it would be your burden then to show that there is a common ancestor that those similar features were inherited from. And that's why I believe that the, uh, you know, hominid fossil record does apply to this debate. And well, so, go ahead. I agree that it would be my burden if the topic of the debate was about the common ancestor that humans and chimpanzees have. However, the topic of this debate was um, whether how chimpanzees and humans are related. If you if we want to have a discussion about the common ancestor between chimpanzees and humans, I would like to um, schedule that for a future debate if possible, because that's a whole nother ball of wax because we're going further and further back and asking what are the common ancestors and doing an evaluation of all those. Basically the topic, um, our chimpanzees and humans are related is, sorry about that. Um, the topic of how humans and chimpanzees are related, um, was the topic that we agreed to discuss today. And I'm talking about the topic of how chimpanzees currently exist and how humans currently exist and how they are currently related. Is that not fair? Kent, go ahead. Well, you're missing the point entirely. The topic is not how are humans and chimpanzees similar? The topic is how are they related? You gave evidences that you think showed that they're similar. I can show you similarities between a skateboard and a, and a Jaguar. Round tires, axles, bearings, grease, yeah. 
that doesn't prove a relationship. How, how could you possibly prove a relationship to chimpanzees? Showing similarities could go either way. Common designer, common ancestor. I say common designer, but I admit mine's a religion. To say they have a common ancestor is your religion. Where's the evidence for this common ancestor? Showing similarities is not showing, it's not the topic of the debate. The topic of the debate is how are they related? Show me how you know they are related. You mean apart from the fact that we share 97% of our DNA with chimpanzees? Okay. We have similar DNA with lots of things. I think that's, again, proof of the same designer. Microsoft oh, Word has thousands of lines of code that are identical to Microsoft PowerPoint. Because the same guys write the code. It's design. It's not. So we have similar DNA to chimpanzees. We need the bodies that have some similarities. We both need arms. So probably the code to build an arm. And your evidence everybody. for this claim is? What now? And your evidence for the claim that there is a designer is? Oh, you want to talk about the designer? We can. But I'm saying the, the, the similarity, the 97% similarity is not proof of a common ancestor or relationship. I could say that's just as much proof of a common designer. But again, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not asking mine to be taught. You're demanding that your religion be taught to all the kids at public expense. First of all, I'm not demanding that Judaism be taught to all the kids at public expense, but I'm so glad I was able to chase you back to the topic of how chimpanzees and humans are related. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't given me one evidence how they're related. You showed me I've some similarities. You showed me similarities. You didn't show me relationship. Try again. Yeah, those are how they're related. They have those same traits. So a lot of things have the same traits. Rocks are affected by gravity. So are, wow, uh, so are space shuttles. That, if, that proves something. You can to show similar yeah. traits, again, does not show a relationship. Do you? How, I don't, do I don't think it's possible. That, Kent, do you not understand that rocks and spaceships don't sexually reproduce? They're not living or Wow. Rocks don't reproduce? Well, in, in your religion, everybody came from a rock. No. Evolution clearly says that. We all came from a rock. But that's a different debate. If yeah, you, I guess the rock, the rock did learn to reproduce. But the, the similarities could okay, easily fine. be... Explained. In my in your religion, we all came from a rock. Okay, happy? Yes. I know... I know it's hard for you to admit that, but that is what it teaches, okay? In mine and your religion, mine being Judaism, yours being Christianity, we both came from um, Adam, which came from mud. So if you want to go that um, go that route, yes, we both believe that humans came from mud. However, I'm going with the scientific explanation. Ah, so is. Um, that humans evolved gradually from other apes. Humans evolved gradually from other species. Has science is what we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. Let's see, definition of science. Uh, that's the definition of evolution. Let me get definition of science. Here we go. Science is knowledge gained from using observations and experiments to describe and explain the world around us. Where is the observation of a chimpanzee ever producing anything other than a chimpanzee or a human producing anything other than a human? We had a cow born today on our North 40, and guess what the baby was? A cow. Wow, mom was a cow, dad was a cow, baby's a cow. Who'd have thunk it? There are no observations of anything other than that happening in the history of humanity. Nobody's ever observed a chimpanzee produce a non-chimpanzee baby. No doctor in the hospitals ever delivered a mother of her child, and it came out even part chimpanzee. So there is no science. There's no science to back up your religion. I'm sorry. Kent, I know you've uh, had the law of monophyly explained to you. So explaining that a cow gave birth to a cow is a, just a waste of time. But having said that, you accept the fact that microevolution happens. I think it's a lousy term. I think you guys have taken advantage of the fact that that term microevolution has the word evolution in it. Therefore, it helps prove macro. I think it's just variation is all it is. Variation within the same kind of creature. That's all anybody's ever seen. But you want to make these family trees to show that humans and everything have a common ancestor, which was a single-celled creature, an amoeba of some kind. And this isn't science. That's all. You're welcome to your religion. Keep your religion. You're welcome to pretend you're something you're not. 
that's okay. But the, the science t says chimpanzees make baby chimpanzees every time. Science is what we can observe. Show me any zoo director that ever observed a chimpanzee having a baby that was slightly more human. Is it happening today? Or did it only happen long ago and far away in the unobservable past? The imagination. Ken, this is all. Now that you really that out of your system, do you accept that the fact of microevolution? Do I accept the fact of microevolution? Wow, well, I believe that there's evidence that there's a lot of variations that can happen within every type of animal, every kind. There are 250 breeds of cows. Probably had a common ancestor called a cow. If you want to call that microevolution, I accept the fact that cows can produce a wide variety of cows. I do not accept the fact that cows are related to mosquitoes and bananas, like you believe. Your All family right. tree shows a protozoa turning to a biology teacher and a cow and a spider and a worm and everything. Everything is related, came, came from a common ancestor. This isn't science. Daria, you've been sold a bill of good. Do you accept the fact that nobody's ever seen a chimpanzee produce a non-chimpanzee? I know the law of monophyly, I understand completely. But on this chart, apparently the protozoa broke the law because it produced something that wasn't protozoa, like everything. So it did break the law of monophyly, didn't it? Ken, I guess I my next question is probably a simple one, but why do you accept the fact that microevolution exists? Why do I what now? Why do you accept the fact that microevolution exists? I, I, I think, as I've said several times, I object to the use of the word. I accept the fact that variations happen. There are all kinds of varieties of creatures that are produced. Dogs produce dogs every time. And there's no exceptions. If you want to call that microevolution, the Bible says 24 times in the first seven chapters, they bring forth after their kind, after their sort. There's no exceptions to it. It's over and over. I accept the fact there are 339 breeds of dogs. If you want to call that microevolution, call it that if you'd like. But I'm not going to give you that term to say, oh, ha, see, there you got a little bit of evidence. Every dog in the world that's ever had puppies turned out to be a dog, without exception. So no, I do not accept the fact that microevolution has anything to do with evolution, like you guys believe. I don't accept that at all. It's not science, not observable. We have all kinds of animals they bring forth after their kind. Dogs, wolves, coyotes can interbreed. They probably had a common ancestor and they were like a dog. Therefore, in your religion, everything came from an amoeba or protozoa. How so does my, how does Judaism simple question came from a protozoa? But anyway, we're getting off topic. Um, no, 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 you you brought up the law of monophyly. So let me just show you very, one more time, clearly, sweetly, and ask you a simple question. This textbook teaches the kids that the protozoa turned to everything. Did the protozoa break the law of monophyly? Do protozoa today make baby protozoa and only baby protozoa? First of all, protozoa don't reproduce sexually. Secondly, you didn't answer my question as to um, as to whether you accept the fact of microevolution. And I know that it's because you're hung up on the term of microevolution. You think that it gives some sort of sway to the fact of evolution. And not particularly. The evidence already does a pretty good job of defending the fact of evolution. But having said that, do you accept that species, members of species can give birth to other members of species with traits and that those traits, if beneficial or not harmful, can be passed down to other members of that species in a process that we call microevolution. Well, I, I would object to the use even though of the word species. There are 21 different de definitions of species that I found so far on the internet. So I think the Bible says they're the same kind. Would you agree that these cows I'm showing are the same kind of animal? Or does this variation within the cow breeds prove they're related to a mosquito? I accept the fact that there are variations of just about every living thing we have. Variations of cattle breeds, variations of corn, variations of wheat. That does not prove wheat is related to cows. There are 4,000 varieties of potatoes. Might have had a common ancestor called a potato. I accept the fact that potatoes can produce varieties of potato babies. I accept the fact that the cats might all be related. Lions, tigers can all be crossbred. Maybe there's a relationship. I do not accept the fact that that 
except the religion, that this evidence of variation within the kind means anything other than a variation of the kind. So you, I know you want to grab onto that word microevolution. Give me a clear definition of species. Is the Kaibab squirrel and the Abert squirrel a different species? Yeah. Can they interbreed? Yeah. So what exactly is a species, Daria? A species. A species is the basic unit of classification um, of organisms. Basically, and there are such things as ring species that have maintain um, the ability to breed with other species such as the, um, as you mentioned, the Kaibab squirrel. However, the fact of the matter is you said that you kept having this problem with the term microevolution. And every time I would ask if you accepted the fact of microevolution, you always went on a tangent. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get a straight answer on that one. So, but you said that you accept the fact that there are variations. Right. And my question to you about those variations is why do you think they happen? I think the genetic code is amazing. I think the creator designed the code so that the baby dogs would somewhat have thicker fur than others. And if they happen to be an extra cold winter, the thick fur ones survive. Natural selection works great. If you turn all the dogs loose in Alaska, only those with thick fur are going to make it more four, four or five years. Wait a That's minute. Not, I thought you said it that it was retarded theory. I thought you said it, um, it was the dumbest religion um, out there. Now you're saying that it's amazing. You're praising it as a part of God's design. I mean, I would agree with you that um, evolution is probably one of the smartest ways God helped create species the planet. But having said that, I get the feeling that you're starting to agree with me and less with, with your original position. Okay. 24 times in the first seven chapters, the Bible says they will bring forth after their kind. So the definition of kind has to do with having sex and bringing forth. Do the uh, transvestites have sex and bring forth a baby? What, I, what, species, what species are they? Transvestites they can't, bring, and can't. I mean, well, they, oh, they can't oh. bring forth. Daria, they can't bring forth. The species has to be able to make a baby. But what exact species are these guys running around with a, with a rainbow flag upside down? That's a different story. So the Bible says they, have, they can bring forth after their kind. Yes, it has to do with sex and making babies. Cows can make babies with other cows. Cows so cannot make babies with a potato. These as well, the, six, the species that don't produce sexually? Are we just going to ignore that entirely? Well, there's asexual and sexual reproduction. I taught biology 15 years. I can have a long discussion on that if you'd like, about mitosis and meiosis and how, the way the cells divide, if you want to go down that route. But the topic of this debate tonight is, are chimpanzees and humans related? You and I would love to back to that topic with you, but unfortunately, you seem hell-bent on ignoring no. how they're, they're similar. You haven't, you haven't proven they're related. You gave similarities. I provided how, proof relation. how they're related. I mean, I, it's not I, my fault that you refuse to accept the facts. I have a lot of similarities with Donnie. Donnie, you're Canadian. What's your heritage? Are you Irish or... Um, a little bit of French and Croatian. French and Co Croatian. My ancestors are nearly all Norwegian. Are we related, Donnie? <laughs> yeah, somewhere down the line. Probably way back. It goes to Adam. Therefore, would we go back further and go to an amoeba? Do you think you're related to an amoeba? The problem that you're having is that you're trying to blend these definitions. Uh, right, correct. I'm, I'm, I know exactly where you're driving at. I, I think the definition of species is nebulous. The definition of kind yeah. might be nebulous, okay? But it I think for a four-year-old, they would tell you, the, their, what, they can tell you what a cow is. They would get a three-year-old and put a cow and a potato and a frog on the table and say, which one is the cow? I bet a three-year-old can tell which one is the cow. It's obvious. There are varieties yeah. of everything. But they're still the same kind. Slide 378. Oh, DV. I'll try to get a picture. Maybe it'll help you understand. There are 225 species of owls. Might have had a common ancestor. But it wasn't an amoeba or a protozoa, because then the protozoa or the single cell creature broke the law of monophyly, because it came out of its kind, didn't it?
is an owl, a single-celled creature, like a protozoa. Your textbooks teach we all came from a single-celled creature, and there's a law of monophyly. So apparently it's not a law, is it? So I'm going to interpret that as and it, it, you saying, no, you do not accept the fact of microevolution. I accept the fact that animals can produce a variety. If you want to call that microevolution, that's your choice. I think it's a simple, it's a variation of the same kind. The Bible says they bring forth after their kind. Do you know any exceptions to that? That's what the Bible says. I believe the Bible is true, and I've said that a million times. I'll say it again. You don't believe it's true. Can you show me any animal or plant that ever brought forth babies that were not the same kind? Humans. You mean like how you produced... Um... I produced three children and they turned out to be human. Mm -hmm. And when they had babies, guess what? Human again. Wow. Happened again. I'd be willing to bet you ten bucks if I ever get great-grandchildren. They'll be human too. Two eyes. And two ears. Yeah, two arms, two legs. Yeah. And either male or female. And they'll probably know which one they are. Go ahead. You know, Kent, I think it's a good time for you to meet my boyfriend. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm Chris. I was just here to sit in. But just hearing everything is driving me insane. Because you're so wrong. Because you're blending all the Yeah, hey, we're going to keep the debate between the two people that are debating. So okay. it's been nice <laughs> to meet you. We're going to get back to the, uh, to the program. I, 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 Thanks. I would love to ask the question to the boyfriend if Daria has a penis, but uh, go ahead. I'd love to ask the question if you know your scientific definition, because you keep misusing them. <laughs> Chris, right. I've been married a long time. I understand real well the difference, real well. Okay. You don't. You literally combine four or five different definitions. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and keep the debate between the two deba uh, debaters. Daria, appreciate it. Sorry, Thank sorry. You. I know. It's a tough, okay. tough topic. But and you're welcome. You, Dyer, you can live your life any way you want. I don't care how you live your life. You can do whatever you want with your life. So can I. The topic is, you. The, uh, where's the relationship? Where's the evidence of relationship between chimpanzees and humans? You gave me some similarities. Hold up, Kent. Hold what up? You asked my boyfriend a really inappropriate question about my genitalia. And I got to say, that's creepy. And that's inappropriate you should be ashamed of yourself. All right, you guys, we're going to we're going to keep I, it on the top. I apologize. I apologize. Thank I'm you. sorry. That is your business what you do. Now, if you want to uh, teach that to other people that that's normal, now that becomes my business. But go ahead. No, what you did was not normal. Asking about people's genitalia un 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 unprompted is unacceptable. You can ask me. I've got one. I don't care. Oh, That's the okay. Point of this discussion I had it all my life. Ducks lose theirs every year, by the way. How does the duck lose its penis and grow a new one? How do you about ducks? <laughs> okay, back on topic. You gave some similarities between apes and or chimpanzees and humans. You did not give any evidence of relationship. I can give some similarities between battleships and uh, uh, the sink pen. They both contain iron. Whoa, that proves they're related. Battleships. And ink pens are not living organisms, hence. Okay. I can give you similarities between chimpanzees and uh, frogs. They both have eyes, too, and legs, and arms, and skin, and respiratory system, and digestive system, and reproductive system. Yes, and Therefore, that's how those species are related. But the, the question was how chimpanzees and humans are related. Okay. Where's the, uh, where's the, where's the evidence? You say humans and chimpanzees are related. The textbooks say all the forms of life on Earth are descended from a common ancestor. I object to this. That's not science. Well, I imagine you object to it, but the thing is, your objection is not founded in reality. Reality is, you think the reality is that a, an amoeba is related to a whale, then how did the amoeba break the law of monophyly? It's no longer single cell. The law of monophyla, bacteria today still have babies, whether it's sexually or asexually. Some do both ways. And I was explaining to you beforehand that it is through microevolution, the gradual um, the gradual adaptation of traits that are either beneficial or non-harmful to the species that help provide, um, that help differentiate species. Many so, cases over long periods of time create a new species. 
Okay, so over long periods of time, does it break the law of monophyly? Does it produce something that's no longer a, a, a amoeba? Yes. Well, then there's no law of monophyly. Well, we're not saying that ultimately a cow is going to give birth to a non-cow in one generation. I didn't say one generation. I'd bet farmers been watching cows have babies for a long time. Tell you, you get some amoeba, they have a baby every, you know, divide, uh, those that divide se those produce sexually, get a single cell creature that produces sexually, and some do that, and they can have a new generation every eight hours. So in one day, you get to see three generations. So in one year, you get to see over a thousand generations. In one scientific observer's lifetime, you get to see 50,000 generations, and they're still producing a single cell whatever it was to start with, amoeba, zygote, or I mean, a, a protozoa, whatever. It, it, it doesn't change. But you want me to believe these charts, which show everything came from a common ancestor, is science. This is not science. To tell the kids a protozoa produced a, a human is, means the protozoa somehow broke the law of monophyly. And you, got, you, you guys talk out of both sides of your mouth. No, it's because you're not listening, Kent. What now? It's because you're not listening. I'm listening and hearing. You, uh, I have, I do have a hard time hearing. I worked in the factory as a teenager. I mean, as a 20-year-old and hurt my hearing. But uh, I, I'm trying. I, I'm hearing and I'm understanding that what you're saying is making no sense. Did this? Did the protozoa? You're not listening, Kent. Okay. This chart from a public school textbook shows the protozoa turning into a biology teacher over millions of years, billions of generations, did the protozoa break the law of monophyly? Yes or no? First of all, that is not the way, that is not what evolution proposes. Evolution proposes um, gradual changes over long periods of time. So no, the human that eventually became a biology teacher did not immediately come from a protozoa. That would have taken many, many, many generations over vast amounts over a long period, period of time and a long period of developing traits for that to happen. So therefore, uh, it, yes, it broke it slowly. It broke the law of monophyly slowly. So if a cow can jump over and we give it vitamins and make it work out, someday it can jump over the moon. No. Over many generations, over many generations. No. Oh, really? No. So there's a, is there a limit how high cows can jump, you think? Yeah, it's called physics. Good. I think there's a limit to the, to the protozoa called biology, called anatomy. They're always going to produce a protozoa. There are no exceptions in research, uh, recorded history. I'll tell you what, get a million laboratories to all do this experiment at the same time. Every eight hours, you get a new generation. How long would it take a million laboratories producing a new generation every eight hours to change the protozoa to a biology teacher? not going to happen, is it? You guys don't understand your own religion. You believe. I understand. Time, you. Why, why do you keep bringing my religion into this? Evolution's a religion. It's not science. Nobody observes any of these changes you guys talk about. Yes, they, they do. make these family trees showing chimpanzees and humans related. They put your lines on papers. All they did. It's a bunch of nonsense. This guy even uh, leaky admitted it. Those trees of life with branches of our ancestors is a lot of nonsense. I agree. But you claim, and the debate tonight is over, are humans and chimpanzees related? You gave some similarities. You, well, there are also similarities between humans and uh, cats. Do you agree cats have two eyes and hair? Yes. Well, okay. They're from apart. Can you tell a cat and a human apart? Yes. Can you tell a cat and a chimp can you tell a human and a chimpanzee apart? Yes. Are they different? Yes. Well then. Why do you think they're related? You are related to a chimp, but you're not related to a cat? Because actually we're, we're related to both chimps and cats. And it's what we have in common that um, is how we're related. It's, it's the same way that you are related to your son and to your father. Because of the sharing of traits. I think the differences between my father and myself and my son, any human on with a half a brain cell working would say, they're all still human. That doesn't prove we're related to an amoeba or a cat or a, a, a crawdad. You guys want to draw lines on paper connecting everything. 
This one has the shrimp related back to a common ancestor with the bear and the human. Do you believe you're related to a shrimp? I believe that all humans are related to shrimp, yes. Ah, okay. And So Dave's a strawberry. And yes, last guy, like, the guy last night is a ladybug, and you're a shrimp. Or related, okay, go ahead. And the reason why we draw those lines is not just out of nowhere. It's because we have a basis for linking these things together. We have countless amounts of research. We have countless amounts of evidence, which shows how these things are related. So it's not just lines on paper. These lines on paper have a basis for being there. That's what the debate is about. Show me the evidence why you would draw a line on paper connecting a human with a great ape and a baboon and a, uh, let's see, I can't read the text there, and all the different monkey types. Why would you draw a line on paper connecting you to a chimpanzee? Because you have similarities? You got the same similarities with your cat. Not all the same similarities, no. Not all chimps are related? What was that? I said not all the same similarities, Kent. Okay, so you have some similarities with a cat, and you have more similarities with a chimpanzee, but do you, you have any differences with a chimpanzee and a human? Yes. Are there any differences between a human and a cat? Yes. But there are more differences between a human and a cat? Yes. But yet the purpose of this debate is for you to provide evidence that you are related, or humans are related, to a chimpanzee. I don't think there is any. Similarities doesn't prove it. Having 97% of the similar DNA doesn't prove it. That, that could be just in a court of law. The lawyer, a lawyer could say, Your Honor, that's just as much evidence for a common designer. If you find a, a murder note, you know, I'm going to murder somebody, blah, 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 and they write it out, and they find the same handwriting on a different note, they use those similarities and say, wow, there's a relationship. The same guy wrote this note. In a court of law, that works, handwriting analysis. So the DNA analysis only proves common designer. Does not prove common ancestry. We're not talking about a court of law, Kent. We're talking about what the evidence proves. <sighs> That's what courts of law are all about, supposed to prove evidence. I okay. thought you didn't really believe that. What now? I thought you didn't believe that. Oh, you want to go off on that topic? <laughs> Here we go. Now, you gave some similarities between humans and chimps. Thank you. Congratulations. There are also many differences between humans and chimps. I, I agree. No. You said that there weren't. Okay, let me show you the title of the debate. Are humans and chimpanzees related? Show me how you think or why you think they are related, not how they're similar. Why do you think you're related to a chimpanzee? And as I told you before, there are multiple traits that we share in common with chimpanzees. Oh, okay. Because we have an opposable thumb? Uh, can chimpanzees touch their thumb to their little finger? That's just one of the reasons why we're late, related. There are others. Well, wait, can chimpanzees touch their thumb to their little finger? Not sure. Google that. Do you think they can? They have, a, they have a grasping hand to grasp branches. They also have a grasping foot. Find out, can chimpanzees touch their thumb to their little finger? The ratio of their finger length compared to their hand or compared to their body length is very different than ours. I mean, they have long fingers for grasping and climbing and climbing around and stuff. They've, they've been, you said one was taught 800 words, at least signs. How many have been taught a vocabulary where they can speak like a human? Have any chimpanzees been taught to speak? You mean like an American sign language? I mean, a verbal language. Can a, can a, can a, can a, can a chimpanzee well, communicate with you? Not all humans can communicate via verbal language either. Okay, has any chimpanzee been able to say, hello, my name is George, where's my banana? Can you get any chimpanzee, not, not sign language, verbal language? Has any chimpanzee done that? Well, I think the problem that you're having is that you're trying to make this about verbal language when sign language is just as much of a language as, um, as the spoken language. Humans can speak. So can chimpanzees, chimpanzees can't. They, they can grunt and groan. There's a lot of differences there. Do you think the human, uh, chim do you think the chimpanzee IQ is equivalent to humans? Some humans. Uh, to, I've met some humans that's equivalent to also, yes. But no, there's a vast difference. 
the in, in many ways there are differences you, you, but even then differences and similarities is not how you prove relationship actually how it you, is okay if you are content to believe humans and chimpanzees are related that's fine but admit it's a religious belief it's not scientific it's you not cannot, a religion. It has nothing to do with my religion what are you talking about you keep bringing this in because when it's irrelevant it has nothing to do with Judaism why do you think it does Religion is something you believe in yeah, without Jesus. scientific. Well, science is what we can observe. I'll show you here. Back up again. Science is what we know by observation. Yeah, like evolution. It's, evolution is not observed. Nobody ever sees a cow produce a non-cow. Never. They well, never we see, see a chimpanzee evolve. produce a non-chimpanzee. They never. But well, we see species evolve over time. So if it takes a long time, then we're not seeing it. So therefore, it's not science. It's imagination. No, science what, we can, science, what we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. Look it up in any dictionary. What is science? It comes from the Latin word knowledge. Seer, I to know, know. You know that we don't have to see something to accept that it's true. Then you believe that it's true. No, it's about having evidence. I believe if you dig down 50 miles inside the moon, you will find it is still solid. Nobody's ever seen 50 miles down inside the moon. That would be a reasonable belief because that's in we, everything else we see would, would fit that those facts. Okay. I think it's a fact. The moon has a solid surface. <clears throat> Can we go down 50 miles? I don't want to go up there and dig 50 miles down on the moon. I don't think it'd be, I think it'd be pretty expensive to do all that. But I think some science is observable, uh, but science is based on knowledge. We know, what do we know? We know chimpanzees make baby chimpanzees every time. Every time, ask any zoo director, have you ever seen the chimpanzee produce a non-chimpanzee? No. Have you ever seen the chimpanzee come from something that was non-chimpanzee? No. Okay, so it's scientific knowledge that chimpanzees produce chimpanzees. Ask any nurse or doctor at the hospital, have you ever seen a human produce a non-human? No, never. So why do you, th you said humans and chimpanzees are different and they are, why do you think they're related? Why do you believe such a thing? Why are you asking the same question that's already been answered? Okay, let me jump in, Kent and Daria. Okay. Uh, that wraps up the discussion. Definitely a wild one. Definitely uh, one to remember. Uh, live chat's having a good time. Um, let's do some concluding statements. Let's say three minutes each. And then uh, Sam has uh, organized a ton of uh, fantastic questions for us for the audience Q&A. So what we'll do is... Uh, let me get my timer out here. And Daria, if there's any you know final points you want to make, same thing with Kent, uh, we can do so now. So we'll take three minutes each, and then we'll get into some audience questions. Go ahead, Daria. Uh, the floor is yours. Three minutes. I would just like to point out the fact that, first of all, Kent Hoven did not contradict any of the points that I made that prove that chimpanzees and humans are related. We still share the same trait. These traits... The fact that we have differences doesn't change the fact that we also have similarities. Kent wants to harp on the differences. He doesn't want to accept the fact that we have similarities too. He, um, and I kind of expected this going in considering the fact that it took so much time holding his feet to the fire even to get him to admit in our last debate that bulls and pine trees are both eukaryotes. So I knew trying to get him to admit that chimpanzees and humans shared these traits was going to be um a tough was going to be tough going but either way the fact of the matter is kent did not at one at any point say that any of the traits that we share that we're both apes that we're we have opposable thumbs that we're mammals the usage of tools um that we're both social species that we both have promiscuity the use of facial expressions the ability to remember symbols culture cooperation language he didn't um, challenge any of those effectively. He might want to prejudice against um, American Sign Language because it's not a spoken language, but that doesn't matter because American Sign Language is still language because it communicates ideas. It still communicates um, questions, answers, same way that any other language does, same, same way as English. So in the end, Kent Hoven did not effectively rebut the the presumption that chimpanzees and humans are related. So, 
There we go. All right, there we go. Three minutes, and uh, we'll hand it over to Kent. Kent, you also have uh, three minutes for a concluding statement. Whenever you're ready, <coughs> go ahead. <coughs> All right, the Bible says very clearly, 24 times in the first seven chapters, they will everything will bring forth after its kind. I think that's all we've ever observed. That is science. Chimpanzees make baby chimpanzees without exception. Humans make baby humans without exception. Okay, now, your list that you gave, I took a picture of it here. You said, we are both apes, that's imagination. You can believe that if you want, that just making that statement does not make it true. You said we have opposable thumbs. So, what does that prove? That proves you're related, or that proves a common designer. You said we're mammals, okay, so are cats. So are hamsters. Lots of animals are mammals, okay? That doesn't prove we're related. You said we use of tools, and I point, I answered it. The use of tools that chimpanzees have is primitive compared to what man can do. Come see our toolbox here. Come see our, our, our tool room where we work on all kinds of stuff. No chimpanzee has, no chimpanzee has ever made a screwdriver or electric drill. There's no similarity. We have, they're social species. Well, so are fish. They swim around in schools. A lot of animals, birds flock, birds of a feather flock together. Promiscuity, that proves we're related because some humans commit adultery with other humans and therefore and chimpanzees have no morals at all. They don't care. So that proves we're related. The proof is sim uh, <clears throat> similarity. Again, the purpose was relationship, not similarity. Use of facial expressions and sounds. My dog does that. Facial expressions and sounds. It's a pug, dumbest dog ever made, okay? Chased a parked car and caught it one day, caved its nose in. You said they have the ability to remember symbols, okay? That's not proof of a relationship. You're, again, you're giving a similarity. You said they have a culture. So do the fish, so do the ducks, so do the hamsters. They have a co they cooperation, okay? And so what does this prove? Uh, it doesn't prove a common. It doesn't prove a common relationship, or co common ancestry, and language. As I mentioned, the similarity of our language and chimpanzee language is almost non-existent. The chimpanzee language is teaching them a few signs so they know what signs to, to get a banana. Our dog knows to go stand by the refrigerator and bark, or to get a, to get a, a piece of a hot dog. So therefore, we're related to a dog. This is the logic you use. I don't understand it. Yes, I answered all your questions, all your similarities. You did not give them any one single evidence for how humans and chimps are related. You gave a few similarities. I could give similarities between humans and a dog. So that's not relationship. You evolutionists do not get it. Purposely, you don't get it because you don't want to get it because you want to be a, a, think you're an animal so you can be promiscuous. That's the real reason. Oh, time's up. Sorry. Go ahead. Questions and answers okay. from the audience, brother? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I was on mute there. <laughs> and we are, we're good. Okay. Thank you for the uh, three minute closing statements, Kent and Daria. I've got, uh, go ahead, Sam. No, I'm good. Oh, I you were good. <laughs> okay. Well, me and, me and Sam got a, uh, a lot of questions. Sam, great job moderating. Appreciate it. And uh, what we're going to do, as we typically do on this channel, Sam and I will take turns asking questions. Whoever the question is for, we'll make sure they get the last word. So let's say the question's for Kent. Kent responds. Daria, you can add in a few thoughts as well. And then we'll give Kent the last uh, the last word there. And uh, same thing if it's you, Daria. So let's get right into question number one. Um, I can ask the first question, uh, Sam, and then you can pick another one. So here we go. This one came in all the way near the beginning from G Moose. Thank you for your question. And the questioner asks, for Daria, since humans and chimps share 90% DNA, and it only takes 4% to destroy said specimen, couldn't we share up to 96% and still not be the same? Same as chimpanzees. Uh, how much of that did you get? Um, if you want to maybe repeat, I would say the first, maybe three, oh, sure. five um, seconds. I never said that we are the same. I said that we're related. Those are two different concepts. And I said that we shared 97% DNA, not 90%. So, and I also shared 
contrary to what Kent claims, I did provide evidence that we are um, we are related to chimpanzees. I mean, I know he doesn't like the fact that I pr provided evidence, but is what it is. Um, so basically, yeah, that I guess that's the answer to the question. Okay, thank you for the response there. Daria, over to you, Ken, <clears throat> for a response. <clears throat> sure, the DNA code of any creature is mind-boggling in its complexity, okay? The lines of code it would take to transcribe out the DNA of a chimpanzee would be billions of lines of code, okay? Same thing with the human. And any, anybody who understands computers knows one mistake in one line of code can crash the system. And one mistake in the DNA code can crash the system, can cause the baby to be spontaneously aborted as it's developing. Oh, something's wrong with the code. And, they, and it goes bad. We have two children here that uh, have a DNA problem. Uh, we're born uh, th this way. Their mother, they're visiting for a couple of days. And so, okay. There are uh, all the changes to DNA that have been proven to be negative, harmful, or usually fatal. Show me one that adds new information that's good. There aren't any. So the question is a legitimate one. It only takes a small percentage. I don't know where these numbers came from, but it don't take a very small percentage of change to destroy the specimen. I agree. If a, if a chimpanzee had one line of code missing that told it, you know, to how not to, not to make a brain, well, it ain't going to live. So if one line of code in your PowerPoint can mess it up if it's wrong. One line of code in your DNA can mess it up. So the similarities are not proof relationship. They prove the same guy wrote the code, one, messing it up one time. The fact that the code can copy itself and then copy the copy and copy the copy of the copy for thousands of generations and still be alive, that's amazing. I like to praise God for his amazing DNA code. All right. Thank you, Kent. And uh, Daria, question was for you. Get the last word. Well, I know that Ken doesn't accept the fact that um, doesn't accept the evidence. That doesn't mean that I didn't present evidence. And also, um, the fact that and the thing is, we're not copying code, quote unquote, copying features, perhaps, but the DNA between DNA between, say, let's say, Kent and his son Eric, um, the same. It's different because there are two different progenitors that contributed to that code base. Therefore, while they are related, they are not the same. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the next question, uh, Redefine Living. I'll put it up on screen for you, brother. And this one's all yours. Go ahead. All right. So, Daria, this question is for you. And the question is, how many transitional species are between chimpanzees and humans? And does fossils evidence of each other one exist? Well, the answer to that question is, I don't know. And the reason why I say that is there could be more transitional species that we just simply don't know about. I mean, the process of fossilization, the preservation of um, skeletons by fossilization is so rare that to, um, to a certain extent, we can't really know if there were other transitional species. So to a certain extent, we don't know if there are additional transitional species other than the ones we've already found. And we don't know if we have evidence of each one, if we haven't discovered that there are, if we have, don't know if we've discovered every one, then how can evidence for each one exist? All right, Kent, you want to respond to that? Uh, classic example of why it's a religion. We haven't found it yet. We don't know. We, we don't have the evidence. We've got to look for it. Send more money for our goes to dig in the dirt and find another bone. This is, this is why it's a religious belief. It's not part of science. Finding fossils in the dirt would not count at all anyway, because all you know is it died. You couldn't prove any of the fossils had kids. Logically, think about it. You know, you found a bone in the dirt. So you can prove it lived but you couldn't prove it had children that lived. You certainly couldn't prove it had children that were different. Why don't we see it happening today? Uh, there are no transitional species. Nothing changes to anything other kind. We get variations, there are limits. They've got big dogs, 44 inches tall, and small dogs, less than four inches tall. They're never gonna get a dog 50 miles tall, and they're never gonna get a dog a quarter inch tall. There are limits. 
you guys don't get it. You think an amoeba turned to a dog. So somehow that amoeba turned to a 44 inch tall dog. That's imagination. It's not science. You guys need to keep that religion at home. Go ahead. Daria, the question was for you, so you get the last word. Of course. Um, I never said that it was a more a matter of giving us more money and we'll find more fossils because obviously I said that it's very possible that they that fossil fossils of every transitional species doesn't don't exist. But that doesn't change the fact that we do have fossils of transitional species right now things that we can study. And that's what makes it not a religion because we have things that we could study, we could test. Contrary to what Kent claims and contrary to Kent's claim of a creator that allegedly um, created everything in the most ridiculous way of creating everything in seven days. Okay, moving on to the next question. Question comes in from Radio Man. Question for you, Daria. So the questioner asks, what process uh, supposedly generates new genetic information required to produce more complex life forms pr from uh, primitive life forms. Go ahead. Reproduction. Okay, short and sweet. We'll hand it over to Kent. Kent, go ahead. Reproduction copies the existing code and there are variations, but there's no new information added. No uh, horses that try to run faster to get away from an enemy ever grow wings. Uh, so there's no new information added. This is dreaming to think a protozoa turned to a teacher by adding information. Take a whole lot of information added to that protozoa to change a protozoa to a biology teacher. A whole lot of information. And that's not observable. It's not science. It's a line on paper that somebody drew and probably got paid for it. Daria, go ahead. Kent might think that the only way to add information is to add wings to a horse, but that's not the only way to add information um, or add traits that help a species to survive. One example of trait, um, a species evolving to be, to be able to survive longer is the COVID-19 virus, which evolved into different variants over many generations, over many iterations to basically survive um, and spread a throughout the com um, population. So it's not just, oh, getting more wings or something fanciful like Kent wants to make it out to be. It's much more mundane. Okay, thank you. Next question, Sam, it's all yours, brother. All right, so Daria, this is for you again. So if you really believe that humans and chimpanzees share a common ancestor, where are the transitional forms? Do you think that there's a serious lack of fossil evidence? Where are the um, transitional forms? I would say that they're in museums. And I don't think that there's a serious lack of fossil evidence, both because a fossil evidence is the, isn't the only kind of evidence that we have. We have many other kinds of evidence, such as DNA sequencing. We have common traits. There are so many other forms of evidence than fossils. Fossils are just one piece of the puzzle. There are many others. Um, so to say that there's a serious lack of fossil evidence no, I don't think there is, and B, fossils aren't the only form of evidence. Just like witnessing um, the birth of a different species um, isn't the only evidence, much as Kent wants to make it out to be. Um, we have many ways to test this hypothesis. We have many ways to determine, um, to evaluate these claims. So it's not just fossils, and it's not just observation. Um, in the sense that we see it happening in front of our eyes within our lifetimes. It's also testing. It's also um, looking at the evidence. Kent, you want to respond to that? Looking at the evidence, that's what I would like to look at. I haven't seen any evidence of any chimpanzee producing anything other than a chimpanzee. I've seen no evidence of any animal of any kind or plant producing offspring the other than its kind. I think all the evidence says, wow, that Bible must be right. They always bring forth after their kind. Amoeba produced baby amoeba. Protozoa produced protozoa. Birds produced birds. Wow, there are no exceptions. You get variations, 4,000 varieties of potatoes. Still a potato. Wow, none of them can fly. None of them can swim. They all live in the dirt. Wow, similarities. Yeah, I think all the potatoes probably had a common ancestor called a potato. 
There is no evidence. I, I got the quote here somewhere where several famous evolutionists have said, all the fossil evidence they have for human evolution would fit on one pool table, one billiards table. They use the word billiards, okay? So I'll find that when I get a minute here. But I think this evolution theory is leading millions of people to hell. I believe the Bible is true, and you're going to be judged one day. I think scoffers are ignorant of the creation. God made them bring forth after their kind. That's all we see. We're ignorant of the flood, and that's what made all the fossils. Fossils aren't forming today. Fossils have to be, animals have to be buried quickly. And to fossilize, the flood of Noah probably made nearly all the fossils on the planet in one year. And they're ignorant of the coming judgment of God. That's the sad part about the whole thing. That's what worries me. So I'll pray for you, Daria. I want to see you give your heart to the Lord. Get saved. All right. And Daria, the question about fossil evidence and transitionals was yours. So you get the last word. Well, I don't think I have anything to add on my point. But I will say that um, Ken is right about the scoffers. He being one of them. I mean, he scoffs at the creation um, and evolution of of life as it currently exists. So Rosh Hashanah coming up and Yom Kippur, I'm going to definitely pray for you, Kent. Okay, here we go. We got a question for you now, Kent. This comes in from Christian. And the question is, for Kent, what is the best evidence against evolution? Uh, that question is, uh, is phrased in such a way, what's the best evidence against uh, UFOs, against uh, Sasquatch? Um, when, you're, when somebody has an imagination, they believe something happened, but there's no evidence for it. I don't know that you need to provide evidence against it. I'd say the best evidence against it is that there's no evidence for it. Nobody ever sees any plant or animal produce anything other than their kind. And I would like to apologize for early on. Daria started this by claiming about my doctorate, okay? I identify as a doctor, so you should call me that. So you started with the gloves off stuff, so I should, probably should not have gone down that road I did earlier. Uh, I will again if you'd like, but uh, I'll try to avoid that. Uh, you can be whatever you want to be, or pretend to be whatever you want to pretend to be. But the uh, evidence for evolution, there is none. None whatsoever. Okay, appreciate that, Kent. Thank you so much. Uh, Daria, over to you. Well, Captain Hovind, I want to say that um, basically the, the there's no real good way to answer this question since the evidence supports evolution, doesn't oppose it. Um, Without evolution, much of the modern discipline of biology wouldn't make any sense. There's so much, and with all the evidence we do, with all the tests that we do, everything reaffirms evolution from paternity tests to um, to discoveries in medicine, to veterinary science, everything we do reaffirms evolution because it works on the basis that we have these common, um, we, we have these similarities. So. I would say that there is no best evidence against evolution. All we have are these rhetorical games that Kent loves and people like him love to play and that do, that try to dance around the truth or deny the truth. But the fact of the matter is evolution is um, evolution is a part of science, it is a part of biology, and it's an important part of biology. And we are poorer for not understanding it and for when we do understand it, we are richer because of we we understand it and it is important to raise up a generation that can understand evolution and how we evolved and and how to how to use these discoveries to improve life here on earth that's why we should also fund it in public schools because evolution provides value it's not a religion it um it basically teaches us how life exists on earth how speciation happens how how viruses evolve how how to get the best yields from cows or how to how to selectively breed or whatever basically the point is if we don't have evolution if we don't understand how this works we are poorer because of it okay thank you uh very much for the response daria and Kent, question was for you get the last word this time go ahead that was a classic example of how thoroughly daria has been brainwashed okay there is no evidence for this theory it doesn't have biology at all you can study all the anatomy and learn the different muscles and the bones the radius the all know the humerus the biceps triceps femoris pectoralis major sternal clinal mastoid frontalis masseter muscles it has nothing to do with evolution nothing whatsoever evolution has been a waste of classroom time 
Kids can learn all about biology, digestive system, reproductive system, circulatory system, nervous system, skeletal system. Bio evolution is a useless theory, even if it's true. It's got nothing to do with anything practical. There isn't a doctor on the planet that needs to know evolution to do his surgery. He better know his anatomy. And evolution has got nothing to do with anatomy. So I'm sorry, you're wrong. You said it provides value. Are you kidding? The evolution theory says some humans are better than others and we should kill off the other ones. Adolf Hitler used evolution to justify what he did. He thought the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians and the Germans were the superior race. To read what Adolf Hitler did. That's why. It was the evolution theory that motivated him to do what he did. Japanese, same thing. They thought they were the superior race. They have milder body odor. Oh, therefore, they should kill off everybody else. I think you need to watch my video number five. If you'll like, I'll send you one. And you, if you'll promise to watch the whole series, I'll send you the whole series. Uh, so I think, you, I think you've been thoroughly brainwashed. I feel bad for you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you for that response there, Kat. Sam, next question is all yours, brother. All right, so Daria, this one's for you again. So um, what is the mechanism or the driving force behind evolution? What is the catalyst to initiate the formulation of a simple molecule, then cell, then tissue, and so on? Well, before I answer that question, I accept Kent's offer for, for a copy of his DVD set. And second, and to answer that question, the mechanism behind evolution is to, for a species to survive um, in, in society. I mean, essentially, the mechanism, the driving force is creatures that are able to survive in the wild are more likely to reproduce. That's how we're, evolution I think we're looking for like a like an information type generation mechanism. If I understand the question, some some sort of system to create these new things to take a cell to then to the tissue and so on. All right. Well, I'll just explain that essentially there. It's not like it's not like that at all. Basically, this is an entirely naturalistic process. That's why we call evolution by natural selection or evolution by artificial selection, such as the intentional breeding of um, of cows to produce um, more milk or things like that is a different. Um, what what um, what I think you're asking for. I'm sorry. What was your name again? Redefine living. Oh, yeah. Well, my name's Sam. Sorry about that, Sam. I'm I'm no terrible. Tom, yeah, Tom asked me. the question. Um, but Tom's question. Um, only really works with artificial selection and not natural selection because artificial selection involves the involves the intentional breeding of species and the intentional evolution of species to produce these traits. So when you use words like initiate, um, you're talking about intention and nature doesn't have that. All right, Kent, would you like to respond to that? Well, there is no mechanism driving force behind evolution. There's no evolution, okay? It, he, he's correct, or she, I'm sorry, she's correct, that uh, artificial selection is what people do to try to you know, selectively breed things. Natural selection is nature selecting something. You know, cold weather can select the thicker furred ones to survive, but that doesn't create anything. It selects from what's already available. That's all. Like I've said many times, take all the dogs in the world, take mine especially, go up to Alaska and let them loose. The thick furred ones will survive, the thin furred ones and the dumb ones like mine would not survive. Okay, they'd be hawk bait. So I think natural selection works and only selects. It doesn't create a thing. It's certainly not going to change the dog to anything other than a dog. We've no, there's no observation, there's no science behind this evolution theory at all. None. It's a, it's a religion. Go ahead. Oh, and by the way, Daria, my offer to send you the DVDs free, and I will, is if... You promise to watch them. That's what I said. You promise to watch them? Okay. Call 855 Big Dino, extension one. My wife or somebody, one of the secretaries, answer the phone, say, This is Daria. Here's where I want it sent. She'll take care of it. And then if you want, you can request, destroy my address when this is over, and I'll never know. Nor do I care. But go ahead. Now, who is that in the back row? Hey, brother, long time no see. <laughs> Um, Daria, question was for you if you want to have a quick final word. 
All righty. Well, I would uh, I would say that Brigadier General Hovind is right. That essentially um, we don't have. Um, <laughs> hey, if he wants to be called, I'm not calling him Doctor, but if he wants to make up a title, I'll make up titles. Um, if, Brigadier, if Brigadier General Hovind wants to have um, to say that evolution doesn't create, I would say that it's. Um, it's the reproduction that creates it's the sexual selection it's the asexual reproduction that creates these um organisms am i echoing no you're good now you're good now all right i thought i was echoing for a bit anyway so i would agree that there's no um creation but essentially it's just we are reproducing. Okay, let's, um, this next question's for the both of you. We'll start winding it down here. We could, as always, do questions literally all night based on how many questions come in. So um, here we go, a question, this one's for the both of you. So instant as a question for the debaters, has anything evolved back to its former self? For example, has a dog turned into a cat and then turned back into a dog? Um, Daria, if you want, you can start. That's not how evolution works. So no, the answer is no. Because in, if we're talking about a self, we're talking about an individual of a species. Again, this is not how evolution works. Evolution works with populations. Okay, thank you, Daria. Uh, cat, over to you. Well, it doesn't work at all. Nothing. The cat didn't evolve to the dog and then back to the cat at all. Uh, the the tra trees of life that they show in all the textbooks are pure imagination. They, sh they draw a line on paper connecting, and it always seems to get more complex and bigger and better and smarter and stronger. If evolution really happened, this question would be legitimate. It should be neutral, go back and forth. Some change is positive, some change is negative. If a, back, if, an, if a protozoa can turn to a biology teacher, could the biology teacher turn back to a protozoa? Why don't we see this happening? We see the trees of life that they draw, but why doesn't it go backwards? Why don't the reptiles turn back to single cell creatures? There's no evidence of this. It's not, it's not scientific either way. It doesn't happen either way. It's imagination. SpongeBob, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Kent. And okay, that was a question for both. So um, let's start winding it down here with, let's see if I might have missed any. Um, okay, here's a question for, here we go, uh, Centurion. Question for Daria. If chimps and humans are related, why are chimps still living in the woods and not in a house like most humans? Pansies. Oh, wait, how much of that did you get? Uh, I would say repeat just the last two seconds and we should be of good. Of course. Um, chimps um, aren't humans. They um, they haven't developed the traits or the knowledge to build houses nor the desire in the same way that humans have. Okay, Kent, anything you'd like to add? Well, it's another example of how chimpanzees are an animal. Man was made in God's image. They're not just an animal. See, animals, plants have a body, animals have a body and a, a consciousness of life, and man has a body, a consciousness of life, and a consciousness of God, a soul and a spirit. Man is very different than all the animals, all of them. No similarity, I mean, the similarities, you know, same designer, DNA code, same needs, we both eat food, breathe the same air, but the, the, no, other than that, we are, man is light years ahead of any of the animals. Okay, thank you, Kent. Daria, have the last word. Well, I would argue that that Imam Hovind is wrong in the sense that um, humans excluding humans from being animals because we are animals. I mean, we are alive. We are not plants. We're not so we're not protozoa. We're we're animals. We're we're apes. We're um, we fall into the animal kingdom. So I imagine. Staff Sergeant Hoban unfortunately had a poor understanding of, 
okay, why the hell am I echoing again? <laughs> no, you're good. All right. I've, I've got it solved. You're good. All right. So, yeah, Staff Sergeant Hoven just doesn't understand that um, it's not that chimps are animals and that we're humans and that humans and that humans are somehow not animals. We are animals to a certain extent. We're humans. Okay. Okay. I think we've. I think we've made it to the end. Um, Kent, Daria, thank you so much for this. Um, before we shut it down, though, let's just kind of have some closing thoughts, closing points, if if you, you both would like to. Uh, Sam, thank you for uh, moderating. Brother, Daria, let's start with you. Final points, final thoughts. Go ahead. Well, as always, it is definitely experience debating Sheriff's Deputy Hovind. And I have to say that... I definitely had a lot of fun and Ken didn't address any of my arguments. So that was interesting. And my boyfriend apologizes for interrupting the debate and I apologize for him too. And, but apart from that, it was wonderful debating you again. Um, All right. Thank you. You kind of cut off a little bit there at the end. But that's fine. Apology accepted. And thank you. Definitely was uh, an engaging, entertaining one. But uh, apologies all around at the end. So very good. Uh, Kent, over to you, uh, brother, Dr. Hoven, for some final words, final thoughts. Sure. I don't know if it's my hearing or the bad audio or was something going wrong. I didn't. Was he calling me General Hoven and Deputy Hoven and all the, anything except Dr. Hoven? Is that what was going on there? I'm not sure. It's kind of cutting out for me, too. Daria, if you wanted to. Okay. So is, is that what you're saying, Daria? Okay, yeah. Daria, put the thumbs up. Uh, so should I use a variety of terms other than what you wish to be called? Uh, never mind. Okay. I think the evidence is overwhelming for creation. Had to be a creator. Had to be recent. I think there's overwhelming evidence this earth cannot be billions of years old. There's no time for evolution to happen. Daria consistently referred to millions or billions of years, lots of generations, lots of time. If you take away time, their theory collapses in a heap. I got my time pacifier here somewhere. Add billions of years, and that, that cures the problem for them. I think evolution is one of the dumbest religions in the world. I feel sorry for those that are taught that and those who believe it. Stop. God made the world. God made, God's going to be the judge of this world one day, and he's going to judge it whether you like it or not. And he gave us a book to warn us what it's going to be judged for. And fortunately, God himself came down, became a man, and, be, and decided to pay our payment for us. And if you'll accept his payment, you get to go to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because I'm good. I'm going because I'm forgiven. You can have the same thing. All right? Call 855-BIG-DINO, extension 3. If you want to talk to me, uh, call, uh, go to our website, drdino.com. Our YouTube channel, Kent Hovind Official. We do a program every night except for Saturday just because I'm tired. Okay? Sunday morning, 11, 11, 8, uh, 1030. So come on down, visit Dinosaur Adventure Landaria. I'll give you and your boyfriend a tour around Dinosaur Adventure Land and show you around, treat you like royalty. All right. Thank you very much, Kent, for those closing uh, thoughts and words and nice invite to uh, Daria plus the uh, free DVD set. So you can't go wrong with that. Very nice. That's awesome. Uh, Sam, thank you for being here, brother, helping out with, uh, with the chats and the moderation tonight. Any final words from you, Sam? No, it was a great debate. Dr. Hoven, it was a pleasure to be here. Daria, nice to meet you. And, and Donnie, thanks, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Great job. Okay, everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in to the round two between uh, Dr. Hoven and Daria Bloodworth. We are out for the night. God bless.